Right. I didn't get to see you do it in London. I went to London. I saw Sierra Bagas as Fontaine. Amazing. Your Love Never Dies co-star. Uh, I didn't get to see you. You had already left. Damn it. I know. But I'm going to go to Toronto. Come. But I want to see you. Maybe you can do it on Broadway. That'd be fun. Well, the, that production's coming to Broadway. After I know. Us. So are you coming to Broadway? No. Not with that. No? I, it's not on the cards. My, I'm just focused on Toronto, then I'm... I want you and things. Sierra Bagas. She could be Fontaine. You could, I mean, I'm, I'm no, no offense to the other people who are playing these roles, but I, I let's just get to it. I love Love Never Dies. I was there for the opening. I saw it multiple times. Oh, my God. I'm, I still don't understand what people didn't... I'm still angry. I'm angry at whoever is watching who didn't like it. Oh, it's one of those things. You know I, know, I think people can like what they want and dislike what they want. Right. I don't. They can't. They have to like what I like. They can't dislike. <laughs> but it's also one of those things that could have been, a, it's a business thing as well. You know, a lot of shows were struggling then. It's yeah. Now it seems like there's, things are really on the up and up, which is great. Right. It was a whole, who knows? You can't, I don't think you can pinpoint one thing. Right. You can, if right. you can pinpoint one, you can pinpoint six. And you can counter that with positive things as well. So it's, yeah. it is what it is. So you were playing the Phantom in Phantom of the Opera when you got Love Never Dies. And then they said... Oh, we're going to bring this American girl, Sierra Bagas, over to play Christine Daae. And were you like, who's she? Like, wh- who? Pretty much. Google but here's her, the thing. like, the mermaid? The little mermaid? What? What? Well, at this point, see, people don't realize I was working on Love Never Dies for two years prior right. to come out with workshops and right. recordings. You were, working with other, you were working with other actresses. Yeah. Right. Just, there was, I think, three or four Christines. Right. But when Sierra came, it, I kind of... You kind of knew. But I remember the day she came was for the second workshops. She just came straight off the plane. And then we met each other. And they took us into the room to sing Once Upon Another Time. I can't read music and stuff. But I, I had sung it previously, right. about six months ago. They said, why don't you guys go through that song? And I'm thinking, well, we don't have to do it. We're only doing act two. Let's give it a shot. Obviously, Christine starts a song. And I'm thinking, well, she doesn't know it. I didn't know she's got perfect pitch and she could sight read. And she was like, boom. I was like, oh, my God. Unbelievable. She was spot on right away. So y- you guys, um, you, you stay in touch, obviously. Well, uh, what yeah, do you do when you hang friend. out? Uh, anything. We play music. We, uh, she's oh, getting better at the guitar, so we try, you know, I get her to sing some duets with me and vice versa. And just talk about life. She's like, you know, my best friend, you know. We, yeah. Sadly, we don't live in the same town, so and she was. She wasn't. You know, she didn't know what she was doing in London. I mean, she was sort of like fresh off the boat in London. So I'm sure yeah. you helped her out. Oh, absolutely. This is where you go like, eat. The thing with with C is like, we just get on like brother and sister as well. Yeah. You know, I trust her. Like, like you, you say you want to see us working together. Yeah. There's nothing more I, I would rather want. You know. Yeah. I love working with her, and creatively, it feels so safe and inspired by her. Is there any chance she might appear at your concerts downtown? There's always an open door. Always an open door. Yeah. Get down there, Sierra. So I'm here with uh, Ramin and Sierra, and uh, they've just arrived at the Adelphi for the first time. Taking a seat. Absolutely. We've just walked across the stage, and they've got the first glimpse at uh, some of the set pieces backstage and the scenery. How are you feeling, guys? Oh, pretty overwhelmed. I've never seen anything like it. You know, we've been blessed to be in the first Phantom, and that was pretty extraordinary. But some of the stuff we've just seen... My heart is racing right now. I'm going to be really honest. I was like this. Yes, ma'am. Yes. We got to go for a safety induction. We're, we're going to learn all about the wonderful workings that we've just seen. Honestly, I've never seen anything like what I've just walked by. Absolutely. We'll catch up with you later. Goodbye. Okay, but it looks great. Come in. I mean, what's this on your ear? It's an ear, um, it's my backup mic, which uh, Why do you need my man's going to come mic? take it. Well, because we need a backup, backup mic as well. Nobody wants you to hear right there. him. What? I'm sorry? Come and take it. We are live. Do you want me to? You might want to put the website there right now. <laughs> Thank you. Phil, it's I don't need it on my ear. Why do you need so why it? Why are you taking it? Oh, sorry. Ow! Why are you taking it? Because uh, we need to change it a little. It needs to be changed. Have you been listening in to us or? No. Oh. It could make here, right? Hey, man! <laughs> <laughs> so, if you know then. Uh, yeah, I need to say the whole thing. Sorry. I know this is, uh, oh, turn that camera off. <laughs> 
That's not usable. That is Thank not you. usable. No it was very exciting. <laughs> it was finally, you know, because it's been such a built up anticipation. I think this is what Sierra was going to try and say. You know, especially for us two, we've been on the project for so long. We've been in workshop situations and in studios at Jerwood Space. So to actually to come here and, know, and feel like home as they've sort of, you know, been do doing it up and bringing all the pr sets and props in, it was, it was pretty overwhelming. And a nice sense of calmness about it, too. It just feels right. But it's it's time, so I'm really happy to be here. And I'm extra excited because it is, after all, my West End debut. And so just being in the West End theater and knowing that I have a dressing room here was so thrilling. Hey, Kevin. I'll phone you right back, okay? <laughs> okay, bye. Sorry. <laughs> Go on. It'd be rude to leave him. Oh, and it's not She'll rude it to out. answer a phone during an interview. Well, actually, just when I was speaking. Sorry. <laughs> this afternoon we're doing sound check. That's why we have our microphones on. Yep. And so we'll be with the full orchestra, obviously. Just they want to get an early sound balance. Usually they do it a week later, but because it's such a big project happening, we got two weeks before a first preview. So they want to bring in the orchestra uh, early uh, now. Uh, did you need to bite these? Uh. And then if there is any problems or any ish sound issues that they need to address, they got two weeks as opposed to one or five days. So we're pretty ahead of the game, which is nice. Yeah. Crazy. I was just going to say that Ramin's dressing room is the size of my New York City apartment. So. <laughs> I don't know if this shot you have us in tells a story. But he that. has one, two, three couches Pit. in here. Next, so what does that mean? I got to go sing. Yes. Yeah. So if you'd like to go and stand by. Okay. Great. Oh. I mean, you're going to be doing Till I Hear You Sing, then Devil Take Behind Me. Do you know those songs? No. Are you nervous? Yes. i got to give him a pep talk, usually before we do anything. Okay. okay. I don't mind you recording. Ramin, yep. stage right, stage left, upstage, downstage. Just picture that in your mind. Mind's eye. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
We have had an excellent week. Um, we learned that Joe plays Raul. I had no idea that Raul was in this show. And he feeds the cast? <laughs> oh, we're hungry otherwise. Why is that? So, as you see, we're taking ourselves very seriously. Um, Keep it really, like really that. seriously. Yeah, everyone, we're doing a serious interview. Um, and tomorrow we're doing Act 2 Run Through. Yeah, so that's two weeks gone, and the whole show basically, you know, some bits by number still, but we've got an arc of it, and a yeah. run through, so. We sort of can't believe that we have finished blocking the entire show. And what's happening tomorrow after Act 2 Run Through? Zitz Pro! With the whole orchestra? Can't wait. This probe is when we hear it with the orchestra for the first time. And so we'll all just sit down in a big room with the orchestra. Um, we'll be mic'd up. Mic, stand up, sing our numbers, and it's Which really be, exciting. That'll be exciting because we get to hear everything orchestrated and come together again. And do it live with the, finally the full company of Love Never Dies. That'll be exciting, right? I can't wait! I'm, it, this probe is always my favorite thing to do in a rehearsal, truly. I love it, so I can't even wait. Oh. Uh, I've had a haircut. Every time I've seen it, it's been short. <laughs> um, it's been short. So it's even made my face even <laughs> rounder. And uh, Sierra's like run off to cry so, herself. Yeah, it's been, uh, I've been gradually taking it down step by step, and today they actually got a wet razor and bicked it off. Woo! <laughs> you got a question? Ask me, eight ball. My name is Ramin Karamlu, and I'm playing the Phantom. Yes. Sierra Vargas, I play Christine. Great. And now, you are the first people in the world to be playing these new roles in the new Phantom. Wow, what an extraordinary experience that's going to be. Yeah, it's thrilling. We feel just how your face is showing. Yeah, <laughs> We're the so way excited. You, the way you just build that kind of made me nervous. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Suddenly you. I'm like, we are. We're the first ones. Yeah. It's us. Once in the, the world. world. That, that's, yeah. that's what got me there. Yeah. But it's really exciting. We're thrilled, and um, yeah. <laughs> well, to be to, to help create something, be part of that process. You know, I think as actors, that's what we strive for. It's what we look for. It's a great opportunity mm -hmm. um, for our careers. It's great, but we're both very passionate about the Phantom. That's why we both wanted to do. I think Sierra, as a as a little girl, wanted to be the mermaid and Christine, which she's done. <laughs> I've always wanted to be the Phantom. I've, I've got to do that. So, first of then. Cr recreate in a way and also create and carry on mm -hmm. those character stories I, 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 I it can't get any better than that <laughs> obviously we all know how massive a success phantom is i mean do you feel the pressure trying to succeed with the sequel because i mean andrew lloyd webber yeah. I mean, he's a bit stressed right for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that's what i said to him today i said no matter how much anxiety we're feeling the stress that we feel andrew will feel it more so Thanks, Andrew, for doing that for us. But I think if we sit too long and think about it, then yes, the pressure would start building. But all of us, including Andrew, we're really just always trying to have a laugh. And, and we've had such a great working experience together already, doing the album with each other. And just, we've really had a ball doing this. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it will continue as we get into rehearsals and, and production. Mm -hmm. And also thinking about the epic success it's had, I don't see this as something as, that should hinder us. That should, that should actually support us, knowing that that support is there and that success is there. We know the story works. We know these characters are loved and they work. So now knowing what they've done with the characters and the story they're going to tell, and I personally think it's probably one of the best things I'm ever going to hear and see and be part of, I, I'm even more confident. So I don't see um, us having to live up to anything. I see us as just honoring what's already good and carrying that story on. Mm -hmm. And obviously you are one of the few people who have, have seen the whole thing and you, you, you know the music, you know the parts. Are we going to like it? Are fans of Phantom going to be impressed? Yes. <laughs> yes. A definitive yes. <laughs> well, the music is in itself is going to be um, a hit. I think it's it strikes every chord of your emotions, the fiber, like the passion that's in every fiber of the, of the or orchestrations. I think Andrew's he's ex exceeded himself yeah. here. He's excelled. He hasn't just written this over the last sort of 12 months. He's, he's been writing, been rewriting, yeah. writing, yeah. rewriting. This has taken a process of what he did you say, like 15, 17 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not something he's he's um, taking lightly. And it, you you heard some of the music today, and I think um, even just in that. Overture and the song, I'm blessed to sing. It's, it's a lot of passion, and the whole show is like that. Yes. It's a, it's going to be a heavy show to carry with each other and be part of. It's a big task.
I think if you're a fan of Phantom of the Opera, you have to really think, why did you become a fan of Phantom of the Opera? Is it the music? Is it the story you connect to? Is it the characters? So I don't see how you wouldn't want to know what happens mm -hmm. to these characters that you've been fans of for so long. So I do think that, it's, that this piece is serving those people who have been great fans and admirers of the show, the music, the characters. How exciting, I yeah, can't absolutely. wait to see it. I'm very grateful, thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you, good luck with it. Thank, thank you very very much. so much, nice thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> we are Studio One at the, I don't Maida? Maida, Maida Vale Studios. <laughs> um, there's a giant orchestra of about 75 in there, and we just rehearsed with them. We have our own dressing room together, Phantom and Christine together at home. Ah, the same room. So, Interesting. You know, it's, it's a modern day Phantom of the Opera. They, they stay together in the same dressing room now. Live he composes together, for together. her in their own dressing room. Um, so here we are. This is, let's take you on the artist retreat, shall we? Food and drinks, not provided. Um, <clears throat> if you need to just hear the orchestra for a second, you can. Good, Andrew will be pleased. And here we are. Sierra, let me just say my last name. Bages and Tam Mutu. B8. Here we are. Now, this is a dressing room. A computer, a, a music stand, which we will not be using. A piano for composing. Um, and a mirror. A full length mirror. These are my Manola Blahniks that I purchased for when I got Phantom, Christine and Phantom at Las Vegas. Here's a gown for this evening. Not this one. This is the gown I shall be wearing, which I also wore for the Rogers and Hammerstein prom. I'm wearing actually a new suit. And Look at that. A suit. Uh, where is it from, Tam? This is from Ted Baker. <gasps> Here we are in the dressing room. We've been waiting for a very long time. Forever. Ever. It feels like forever. This is Tam's new suit. Doesn't he look amazing? This is the dress I wore to the proms. Here we are in it again. It's radio. I don't know why I'm really actually having to wear this dress, but here we are. Okay. Okay, we've just finished singing with the BBC Orchestra. We did it. Sierra was incredible. So was Tam. He made me nervous because he was so good when he sang his song. I was like, oh God, he's raising the bar. I think she's being modest. There's a spot of champagne in the cubicle if you'd like to go. Oh, oh we'd okay. love champagne. We'd love some champagne. Would you, get on a flip, honey. Get on a flip. Claire, this Claire. is Claire. She's, Claire. she's been taking care Claire of us. All day. So and now she says get, champagne. Thank you very much, Chris. We're so relieved. Thanks for We're sure. on that boy. Oh. Cheers. 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 When love begins, who knows what makes it start? One day it's simply there. When you go to this one, I would just think of an R slightly. Oh, no. <laughs> because you're just slightly higher, I would just open it up a little bit more for that one. So it's not quite as ringy as the one before. And try it, but I mean, not too much, but just a slight feeling of it. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, just so that you. you yeah. Quite wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the song. Well, I think it's probably <laughs> um, as good as it gets. Hey, maybe I can I, ask you. I don't think we want. I don't think we want a big call at the end of it. I just honestly think just. I think love lives on. And then. And that's it. Okay. Because I think I mean, it'll stop the show completely. Just let that thing happen. I mean, with the, with all, all yeah. the really great arias, <laughs> they never have big endings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. It felt. It. It felt. I thought Wrong. it was going to end. Okay. And then with fleeting, we yes. had tried in the. Let me fleeting. Yes. But yeah, I think you did that superbly. Okay. It was just literally that. The it got a great sod, sodding great cold at the end of it. <laughs> we get rid of it. <laughs> okay. Us. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, be your
your heart and sing for me. You want it so. That's great. I would do that when you're fresher. I really would. In the case of Love Never Dies, you're, you're dealing with somebody else's legend. And you have to be very careful how you do that how you uh, awaken fears in people, how you tread on their memories, how, you know, how they uh, basically respect what you're doing, because a lot of people think they own that story. They think they know that story. He's actually singing, sing once again for me, da 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 da, that's what his thought is. And it's about, the, you know, the love of his life is going to sing for the first time for 10 years, he's going to hear that voice again. And he's apprehensive about the fact that she might sing. Originally, we thought that we'd roll out Love Never Dies internationally very quickly. In fact, we thought about doing three productions at the same time. But we drew back from that because I wasn't absolutely certain that we could cast it sufficiently well immediately like that. And I thought we must get the initial cast completely right, which is why we've got this unique thing of an album already recorded, which contains our original cast. I don't think that's ever, ever been done before. I think the A is better. Well, our lead is the present phantom in London who's been playing it for a long time. There's been a really popular, very sexy phantom, I have to say. And uh, he, he's just great. Uh, we've just finished the recording of the complete album. It's all done now, unusually for a show. And. Uh, our other principal, Sierra Boggis, who played The Little Mermaid in New York, uh, I've known for a while because she also played Christine as a young girl when she was, what, well, well, she's very young now, but she was only 21 when she did Christine in Vegas for me in uh, the Las Vegas version of Phantom. A terrific actress, and uh, having just now recorded the whole thing and finished it, I, I know that they are an incredible fit. The passion that there is between the two of them, I mean, it's it's almost sort of unbearable at some times, it's so strong. Because I saw, uh, uh, Ev was it Evita here? I think, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, she was, God, she was, that was extraordinary. So, yeah, it was absolutely, I mean, the whole choreography, and you know, it was that's gonna happen bloody hell. Oh, really? Why, really? With who is she? Ricky Martin. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, I didn't know he was still doing things. I think he'll be good. Yeah, I do. You'll be older. So you ready? Listen, Let's talk about this. Oh. <laughs> we're going to say something else then. Right. Oh. Uh, easy question to start with. Just so we've got to make sure we've got the levels right. Can we have both your names? Then they're on the tape. Then if anyone else should use it and they're not quite sure of the history and the future of the Phantom, then we know. My name is Ramin Karamlu and I'm playing the Phantom in Love Never Dies. My name is Sierra Wagas and I play Christine in Love Never Dies. Let's start with an easy question for both of you. One of these three words, please. Nervous. Excited or exhausted? Exhausted, nervous. <laughs> Cheating? Okay, if I have to choose, I'll excited. Excited. I mean, this is a massive deal, isn't it? Yeah. Um, let's start with you, Sierra. I mean, you have opened in Christine before, but that was in Las Vegas, yeah. and that was um, a version of the Phantom. Yeah. This is a new show, same character. What's the difference between the characters? Let's start there. The difference between Christine... Yeah, from Phantom of the Opera and the Phantom in this. Well, the, the major difference is that she's ten years older, um, and she has a child, and she's married, so she sort of made a choice in this one, where in the first one she's, you know, she's young and she's, she's still dealing with the death of her father, I think is a huge part of, of what she's going through then. And, and um, how the Phantom relates to that sort of angel of music, father, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, now it's really about who she's grown into and um, how her choices have made her who she is today. Um, Clearly, I mean, the, the roles have changed, the characters have changed. Um, <clears throat> when we had a chat about two and a half years ago or so, you said to me that uh, you didn't live in the shadow of Michael Crawford and all the phantoms had gone beforehand. You stamped your own authority on it. They all, they all did. This is different, though. How is it different to be playing the phantom in a whole new story? How, how does it differ in terms of pressure on you as a performer? Well, I don't look at, it, at the, the pressures of it because I don't think that would be helpful. But I think it's the first time I've been able, especially with this character, 
is a parallel with my life. You know, 10 years is a long time. I look at my life over the last 10 years, apart from sharing the same name, it's two different people. Even physically, the way I walk, the way I talk, we're different people. And I've had a blessed life. So dealing with what society, uh, the circumstance of my life and how different I've changed, I look at the phantom who socially, uh, his environment, everything has been turned up on its head. So how that affects his psyche, is, 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 it's a tremendous change. He went from darkness to light. He's been from, from being a man who would have been chastised if caught. He had to hide his, himself in a lair. He had to be ghostly. He wasn't a ghost, but he was ghostly by the way he physicalized himself, the way he moved around the theater, because he had to do that. He no longer has to do any of those things. So that would change someone. And I found that an exciting uh, prospect to play the character and to really humanize him. Like we, I think what Michael Crawford did was amazing. He brought out this human journey of this what appeared to be a freak, a, a ghost, but what, that, what, that, that's the beauty of this character. And now we can really explore that because society sees him as a human being as well. When you step out on the stage tomorrow night with all the expectation that's going to be on your shoulders, the pair of you, um, what's going to be going through your head? What do you have to prove? I don't, I, I don't feel like I have to prove anything. I'm, I'm only going to do what I can do in any job, I, got, I feel very passionate about this show. I feel passionate about my character. And all I can do is just share the story that we've learned to do. And like any other night, do our best. You know, It just happens that in this business, we have our press nights. And there is, I guess there is a pressure. And I feel more for people like Andrew and Jack, because there's a lot riding for them. But I know I'm going to give my best like I would any other night. I'm excited. You know, I believe the show has a long future. Um, it comes with a lot of expectations, I know, but at the same time, it is a, it, it's a beautiful show. Sierra, as a performer, those expectations, are they increased by the fact that this is another Lloyd Webber show, or do you perhaps take a little bit of comfort in the fact that, hey, Lloyd Webber's out there and he's pretty good at this sort of thing? I, personally, I do take comfort in the fact that he's, he's out there and, and you know, because we've gotten to know him so well throughout this process, I'm comforted in knowing that he's there. I'm comforted in knowing, you know, when I'm singing his music, I'm not thinking, oh, I wish it was different. <laughs> I'm thinking this is the most amazing music of my life to be singing right now. So I know that it does come, I know people have expectations because he is a genius and the, and people are fascinated by him and what's what has he come up with next and that's why there's so much interest in this show because Phantom of the Opera is a beautiful score and it's an incredible show and so people do think how can you have another show as spectacular as that but we're not competing to try and make this show better than that we're just adding on to it and and it's it was it's his choice of of he feels so passionately about Phantom of the Opera. But you were his choice. He chose you Me? personally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel amazing about that. I feel really so lucky that I get to be the first to pave the way for Christine's, hopefully many Christine's to come, that get to explore her journey 10 years on. Because anybody who's played Christine before in Phantom of the Opera, I think... I, I, I can speak for myself, and I, I, I loved playing Christine. I love her, and I really understand her. And so it's really fun for me to get to explore her now, 10 years on. And I'm honored that Andrew thought that I was the girl for the job. There have been, obviously, a lot of people that have seen the previews. One or two, as you're probably aware, have said not particularly nice things in, in blogs. Uh, not about you, but about the show. Does that... Um, worry you or do you expect some people to frankly dish it and diss it anyway what how does that well, yeah i think with any sort of artistic thing anyone does there's going to be people who like it and people who don't like it there are going to be people that want it to fail that's right I, but that, that's what i don't get is we had this before we started but to kind of be so passionate about something that they haven't seen and i never get that but you know what the immediate reaction we get every night is validating that Actually, you know what, we're, we're, they're getting the story, the people who are given a standing ovations are not, every night are getting it, but there's going to be people that don't like it and who won't come back, but the majority from what we've seen are really getting it. We try not to, well, we don't read those uh, sort of blogs or anything along those lines because, it's, again, it's not helpful, 
But I think you're right because society and people have seen Phantom One have sort of taken ownership of it, and we owe a lot to those people who have kept it running and seen it for so many years. But at the same time, to feel so passionate about something failing before giving it a chance, I just don't even understand that. But every night we're getting a, an immediate reaction that people are getting this story, they are enjoying it, we're getting standing ovations, and it's almost like a full house. And the more we do the previews, the better the show's getting, the more established it's getting, and the reactions are getting better and better. So, Do you have to have seen Fan from the Opera to understand Love Never Dies? No. It stands alone... It stands alone, and you know it's cool if you've seen Phantom of the Opera, um, because then you get to go into this knowing the characters before. But it really is, uh, it really does. It does, yeah. It does stand on its own because, as well, our characters are different people now. So there will be a sense of if you see them back to back, like in a matinee and evening, there will be a bit of like, oh, these guys, they're, they're yeah. different people. I like your but thinking. But that's the whole point. We can't, we are not the same people. All right, uh, final question to you both. It's um, hours are ticking away. The big night is very almost upon us, very nearly upon us. What is going th through your head? I mean, is it a relief that you're about to do it? Is it absolute nerves as to what might actually happen? Um, you, th there is going to be a huge reaction to this in the papers here. On, you know, be surprised if it doesn't make some of the front papers on Wednesday morning. Are you ready for that? I mean, you, you know what you're caught up in here. Ah! You made me nervous. <laughs> now we're nervous. You know, I, the word you use, relief. I'm glad that it's, because the show's ready, people will make what they want on Tuesday night. Do I believe the show will run and it will be successful? I wholeheartedly believe that. I feel passionately about that. So, you know, even like the first one, it didn't get the best reviews, did it? I don't know. I honestly don't know because I don't. I never read reviews. I still haven't read reviews from shows that I've done before. They've been quite good. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, and so, I, and I don't know that about about Phantom of the Opera. And I, I'm so proud of this show that honestly, my goal is just to tell the story. Just get out there and tell the story. And we always say to each other, we have nothing to prove, only to share. And we remind each other of that all the time so that hopefully Tuesday, you know, when it is such a big night and it does hit you, and there will be a different electricity in the audience. And you know what, as many people, as we've, we've talked about, the people that, you know, are wanting this to fail, and there, as many people as there are like that, there's also many people who are so excited about this and we're going to feel that people are going to be so excited because we're so excited and we're ready to tell this story and obviously Andrew was ready to tell this story now at this time in his life and we're just lucky that we get to be the ones to tell it. Okay let's see both in unison bring it on. Let me hear you say bring it on and mean it. Bring, bring it, it on. on. That'll do me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Great, thank you very much. Uh, if you can sit for one minute while you quick, get a quick... No, it's sorry, just a cutaway. Just a, yeah. just a, um, just, well, I'll go when we're ready to go. <laughs> so you're, you're two boys, isn't it? Two boys, yeah. Uh, and then um, obviously both in local schools? Yeah. And how's that going? Enjoying it's that? going good, yeah. yeah. But I, what I really want to talk about, so she gets into characters, when we met two years ago, to this day, she's the most annoying person I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, I'm <laughs> Your face saw that as a very I serious. Have no idea. I thought I could believe it. Good one. <laughs> 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 I'm so That's hard. Right, right. Can I just interview you over? Yeah. Yeah, hang no, on. No, she's awesome. Keep it hold just for a little bit longer. Sorry. That's it. I don't have to say anything about the distraction to multi children. That's why we are. You see the DVD that Andrew did? He was talking about the chemistry between them is amazing and it's unbearable at times. And it cuts to us just messing around. Behaving like. Did someone find that for you to say, or did you go they and found it for me. yourself? They found it, and I went and looked at it the last, one of the last times that we were here. And I just let, I literally go across the street and go home. <laughs> but this idiot has to go. <laughs> <laughs> he has to go an hour home, so that's stupid of you, isn't it? Mm. That you bought a house all the way out for. Yeah, Such but. I don't know what it is. I'm glad it's not about to be about for me. 
No, and I will go out and, you know, Joe, who plays Ralph, he's so much better than Ramin. Yeah, so yeah. I wish that he could be part of the city. Yeah, and yeah. Ramin, yeah, well, they're going to get Up there in the middle? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Allow me to just... <laughs> Well, we've heard Andrew's music, and it just is incredible. Has some of the most beautiful score, and Love Never Dies. We've we've recorded the album already, so we know the entire score. We've heard it with a beautiful orchestra, and the man's been writing it for years and years and years, and he's incredibly passionate about it. And so we are passionate about it, and with that amount of passion on a stage. You can't go wrong. Look out. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank for your you. I really Thanks. appreciate it. Thank Well, thank you very much. Um, obviously, one thing I didn't say, uh, we made no attempt to stage this uh, at all, as it will be in the production. And this also gives me a wonderful opportunity to, to introduce our Christine, Sierra Burgess, who I saw in Las Vegas, I think it was, wasn't it? And it was great Christine she was. And Ramin, thank you. And thank you for keep, keeping the curtain up here every night as well. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're going to say goodbye. And thank you very, very much indeed once again for coming. And we're going to have Simon is going to give us a little bit of music on the way out. Well, I'm feeling very good. Um, even though it's been a week since opening, it's been, was it, over, this is our fourth week of full performances. And um, it's great. It's exciting to see the show evolve. With every show, we, uh, we get more and more into the characters. And, oh my God, I can't believe ah! happened again. Ramin, Karen so Moyle. I'll, um, let me just put that aside. I won't even answer this time. I won't answer this time. Always answering his phone. Thoroughly as if it's important. Oh my god. Have you ever seen an Iranian blush? Um, Stick. As I was saying, we're, uh, the characters are evolving, the story's getting tighter and tighter. Um, what's great is seeing the reaction of the audience every night is uh, continuing to be uh, well received. Uh, standing ovations. We, I see people crying and really moved by the story. And that's. Or. Because you're really good. Read our reviews. 
I don't read my reviews. I did this time around. When I say this time around, it's been the only time around that I've been reviewed. <laughs> so I thought I'll give it a go. And you take the good with the bad, and I was actually uh, quite pleased that there was a lot of really good reviews. Everyone's got their own opinions, and what's more important is the opinions we're getting every night from the audience, which is great. Yeah. I think like Phantom 1, people will fall in love with this the more they see it. Yeah, and we have people already that we've met at the stage door that have been coming back. Five times this one yeah. guy's come already, which is amazing. Which is so cool. Which is a great support that we have <laughs> our fourth week into it, so how great is that? Yeah. The only way that it's different performing now as opposed to when we were in previews is that we're not rehearsing during the day and changes aren't being made still. Um, but it, it actually feels the same because I'm still evolving my character and um, we're still finding like new ways to do the show and, and new things and it's, so it's, it still feels the same like it's we're still on a journey, still working. It's not like, just because we opened, we're not working anymore. It's like, our work as actors is really beginning now, because, you know, the creative team has gone away, and the technical elements are in place and everything. I can't imagine ever being bored doing this show. It's like, it, it's actually the most fun that I'm having. I, I'm looking forward to every night getting on stage. <laughs> I think what's different as well is during the first two weeks of previews, we um, there were so many rewrites that we had to just get used to that, and you sort of like, now we can live the characters and find the dynamics, the highs and lows of each sort of scene, uh, not be dictated by the music emotionally, because it's nice to, you know, the music will give you one emotion, so as characters we can find yeah. uh, different emotions to play with. We're, yeah, we're trying to play against the romanticism of how Andrew has written the music because it is hard as actors not to fall into the how gorgeous it sounds and, and play right into that. What's interesting that we're finding is if you play against that... Yeah, it just gives you different levels. Yeah. But sometimes I just want to sit back and just be like, oh man, that man's a genius and just get taken away on the journey of the beautiful melodies that he has written. I enjoyed myself on opening night. I enjoyed myself during the show and I felt really proud by the end because I was able to stay in it and not think about all the celebrities in the audience, that my family was there, that, you know, once we were on stage, I felt like just the most amazing feelings in the whole world, just totally focused on what I was doing. The party, on the other hand, I didn't really get to enjoy because, um, you know, we still had to do work and interviews and things like that. But my family, I loved that they had such a good time at the party. And when I walked in and saw how it was set up and everything, it was so cool. And there were so many different things to do. That's the only thing I wish is that I could have stayed long enough to really experience the party afterwards and celebrate what we had just done. But it was, I had a great time on stage. Yeah, I really enjoyed the show. I didn't enjoy the lead up to the show, as you saw with the previous vlog where I was almost barfing. And, um, but the show was fun. The show we um, uh, the show we uh, did, I think did, we didn't do more than we needed to. You know, we, it was still a work in progress for us, and we had a lot of fun. It was a great atmosphere, a lot of energy. Um, like Sierra said, the after party was uh, not as much fun as we liked it to have been because we had work to do, and by the time that finished, we were just so exhausted as well. And, but um, to get to know we had a show the next night, I just wanted to save my voice as well. But I got to see some friends I haven't seen in a while, and. That's nice that you have friends yeah. there for you. A couple, not too many. No, never too and many. And some acted like it, which is fun. That's good. Great. Hire a friend. <laughs> Dot com. Dot co UK. Mm -hmm. Here. Oh, Dot co UK. On this side of the room. And here we are at the end of a week. And uh, who do we have hanging around the stage door? But uh, Mr. Ramin Karimlu. Hello. Sierra Bogas. Hello. And Mr. Joseph Milson. <laughs> How are you feeling, guys, at the end of uh, a full week of tech? How's it going? Really good, because we've already started, at the end of a full week of tech, we've already begun the second act, oh. which I think is pretty extraordinary for a tech process. Don't you guys? Yeah, it's a lot of fun, too. It doesn't seem too stressful. We're getting, oh. We had a nice moment today, uh, setting Devil Takes a Hind Moss. How are you oh, fine? Because you were quite experienced with theater. And I can't believe how long this tech is. Right. This is your 48 hours maximum. This, this is, is unbelievable. Your, how many musicals have you done? Uh, technically, on paper, I've done four or five, but the last one was 12 years ago. But it's quite an extensive and intensive. Yeah, this, is, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Right.
Right. How yeah. fun we can all be here for you. Oh, it's great. Good. Oh, are you having a great time, though? I am having the time. I feel like I've won a competition. Am I doing your job by asking two, all the questions? Yeah, go two, ahead, two, please. Two English, English viewers of a certain age, I feel like I've won Jim Will Fix It or something. I want to be in a musical. And they're going to... Okay, we can make that, that true. Right. It's this great Sorry. kids show, and he would make anyone's dream write a little letter. Mm. I would like to be in a musical by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Okay, that make it real for a whole day. And I feel like I'm on Jim Will Fix It. And any plans for uh, for your day off tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> it's We're Valentine's right. Day. Oh. Uh, I have great Don't plans. Don't remind me. Yeah. Singles Awareness Day. Yeah. Um, I always look forward to Singles Awareness Day every year of my life. I'm watching some UFC cage fighting to catch up with. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's my only day. We've been taking 10 hours a day. So yeah. Fair enough. I yeah. missed last week's UFC 109. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So cage fighting. A, rom a, a romantic dinner I'm and a singles night. That's, uh, but I'm going to a wedding. Oh, anyone we I'm know? I'm going to celebrate someone's, someone's love. Summer Strahlen's sister is getting married. Scarlett, Scarlett. Strahlen and Nick. So, were you invited to that? Her husband Cut. to be, Nick. Nick. Sorry. Scarlett and Nick mm -hmm. are getting married and I'm going to go celebrate love. Excellent. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Have a great day off, and we'll see you next week. In a week, week, week. we'll all be going on. Oh, yes. In a week, we'll be there. Oh, yes. Bye.
Uh, well, David, thank you for a wonderful performance. What a conductor we've got down there. Uh, come on, hold my hand. I need it. I, I mean, I, I don't know whether to laugh or cry tonight. I mean, this is probably the saddest night of my career. And yet, and yet you guys in the audience have made it one of the greatest as well, so that's all I can say. I just really want to thank the people who, uh, who stayed with this show from the very, very beginning. And really supported me. Thank, thank you for everything and everybody who has, who has just stood by me. I have to also mention, I cannot not mention, the wonderful work of Bill Kenwright. Yeah. Bill. I don't know what Bill's here, but uh, it was extraordinary because he, along with a lot of other people, has favoured the show. I think made it possible for us to be even here tonight. I, I, I've got nothing else really to say other than love never dies and I hope it will continue somewhere. <laughs>